Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. We have another beautiful calm day this morning in Orange Beach, Alabama. So we're going to head again 20 miles offshore once more. It is 7 a.m. It shouldn't take us too long to get there. We should have very calm seas. So how about y'all stay tuned, sit back, relax. Let's get into some fishing. I hope we can catch something big today. All right, we're gone. I'll see y'all in 20 miles. Beautiful morning this morning. See you later, Orange Beach. <laughs> up on this buoy so we have about five miles left in the trip to get to where we're fishing but there's the buoy right there it's so cool all right let's keep on going in 102 feet of water so we're gonna go get position on our spot and find the reef we're sitting in 105 feet of water right now so so crazy beautiful water out here let's get this trolling motor down the best investment you can get for a boat is a remote controlled trolling motor with gps it's like the best thing you can get we're gonna go get on the reef and then hit the spot lock anchor and get to fishing really simple i have some squid as bait this is whole squid what i like to do is take a pair of shears you can do the same thing with the knife cut off this tentacle save that for bait run your knife up through the middle and this one's still partially frozen but just cut it just like that and then you can open it up and then what I do is kind of scrape out the inside, toss that over as chum, and now you have a squid skin. And I just go through, take my shears and cut strips out of it. You can buy pre-cut squid as well. And then I take this strip, cut it in half. Shears make life really easy. And now you have plenty of bait out of that squid. So I normally like to prep bait before I get down because when the bite's hot, you don't want to sit there and keep on cutting up squid. So I normally do a few, but we're going to bait up real quick, drop down and see what we can catch today. My rig's really simple. Got a barrel swivel, 20 pound leader. I tie two dropper loops in it coming to a two alt circle hook. So I'm going to bait the squid. We'll run it through a couple times through the hook. I like to do about three times. Stays on really well. It's pretty tough bait and the fish can't resist it. But this is it. Then I tie a little loop on the end and I'm using a two ounce bank sinker. So one of my setups today that I'm using with this dropper loop is a pin spin fisher. This is a 4,500, 20 pound braid and a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod. We are marking tons of fish down there. Let's drop down. You never know what you're gonna catch out here. You never know. That's always a fun part about this type of fishing. 100 feet down is pretty far. Now we're sitting on the reef right here. Our weight is. And I just like to reel the slack out of my line so it stays tight. That's where a braided line helps a lot. You can feel everything that's going on. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. See, trigger fish is open right now. So if we catch a legal one, we can keep it. But we will see what we have here I don't think that's what this is oh I know what this thing is I am not touching it that is a soap fish they uh they're very nasty if you get that slime on them it's hard to get off even washing your hands kind of weird looking things just I don't like touching them apparently their slime is slightly toxic as well but I don't think in big numbers so we're back down on the bottom that's one type of species today there's a fish. Oh, yeah. Good one. Good one, too. Good one. Oh, I hope that's a target species, but that might be a snapper. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's probably a snapper. <laughs> Golly. Come on. Come on. Mm. Uh, get up here. It's a good fish. That's a really good fish. It's pro I don't know if it's a trigger fish or a red snapper. It's kind of coming up like both, but we will find out, right? Uh, that's why I like throwing a medium heavy, but you can still use light tackle and get them up when you're doing this type of fishing. Now, if I'm dropping down a big bait, I'm not going to do it. Oh, whoa, my goodness. That's a giant porgy. We're keeping this fish. I just caught this porgy here. They're like a mix between a sheep's head and a pinfish. They're kind of cool. They actually taste pretty good. So we're gonna throw him in the cooler and then we'll drop back down and see what else we get. That's 
two species already this morning. Well, we'll drop this squid tentacle down on both hooks. Hopefully we can get something up. Oh, there's one. <laughs> they like the squid tentacle. Dang it. <laughs> These things, this is so fun. Oh man. They just pull hard. They don't want to get pulled up off their home, which I don't blame them. But once you get them away from the reef, you have 80 feet of water to fight them in. But, but just getting them. The key thing, as soon as you get that bite, get them off that reef. There's another porgy. We'll keep a couple of these. I got a friend that likes fish, and I'm going to give him some fish. And these are actually really good, so I think you'll like them. Oh. There's another fish. Uh, hopefully it'll be something other than a porgy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I want. Ruby red lips. <laughs> okay, I am going to use this as bait. So let me put in the live oil real quick, get my other setup rigged up, and get ready to drop one of these down. It's time to bring out the big guns. I got this custom pin senator. I got it as a gift from a buddy and my mom from Pompano Joe Real Works over in Pensacola. So he built this senator. It was a Christmas edition. It's really cool. I've got it spooled up with 80 pound braid. Coming to a five ounce egg sinker, 130 pound barrel swivel, and 80 pound Yazuri fluorocarbon. Got about six feet of it. And then I snailed an eight alt circle hook. <laughs> I don't know why I want to do this, but I want to see if I can hook a big fish today. So I'm gonna take this live Tom Tate. This is a live Tom Tate or Ruby Red Lips. They call them Ruby Red Lips for obvious reasons. Check out the inside of their mouth. But let's take this circle hook, go through their nostril, just like that. There's a lot of cartilage there. And we're gonna see if we can hook into a big fish. I did find a ball. I've been missing it forever, but I found that little ball that will help with the cushion. But let's see what happens here. This is gonna be insane. Let's drop it down. What I am going to do is put on my gloves because I'm by myself. I don't want to grab the line and it cut me. Red snapper and amberjack are out of season, so if it's too big for the net, I'll want to handle it. But let's drop this sucker down. Turn off the clicker. We're on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is reel it up a hair and I'll see what happens. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, oh, did it take it? Oh man, it took it. I think it took it. No, it's there, it's there. Ah, come on. Oh, oh, got it, got it. That didn't take long. <laughs> that did not take long. Oh my goodness. You just gotta get them off that reef. Uh, I brought the big gun out today though. Uh, uh, uh. Come on. Uh, uh. There's a good one. I don't think that's the bait I'm after, but you never know until you pull it up. Oh, nice mangrove snapper. Oh yeah. I just caught a really nice mangrove snapper. Look at that. What an awesome fish. Those things taste so good. They only have to be 12 inches in Alabama and you're allowed 10 of them. So we're gonna throw this in the cooler and see if we can get some more. I'll take these all day. I love mangroves. They taste amazing and you can keep them year round. There's no closed season on them. So let's throw it in the cooler and get another bait out. So that mangrove snapper is the fourth species of the day, but the most desirable out of all four that I've caught so far. So it's been the soap fish, the porgy, tom, tate, then the mangrove snapper. So we're back down on the bottom. All right, got a bee liner, vermilion snapper. They just have to be 10 inches. This is a keeper right here. So this is a vermilion snapper, bee liner, mingos, however you want to call them. You can catch these year round. They're very easy to catch on light tackle. They like squid, cut bait, but these are really good to eat. So let's throw them in the cooler. Let's drop another bait down. So add that to the species list for today. See what else we can pull up. Y'all look how pretty this water is. 
It's got that gorgeous blue green color. It is amazing. It's like the Lake of Mexico out here. We're gonna go a little bit further, try our luck on another reef. Okay, we got something good. We need to get it off this reef. Uh, gotta get it off this reef. There we go. Once you get in open water, you're normally okay. Trigger fish. And let me guess, he's not gonna be a keeper. Nope. So, we did catch a trigger fish. We'll see if he goes down. If not, we can vent the fish. But yeah, he went straight back down again. So it should be good. Get it back down. Add that to the species list for today. I'm not trying to hide any GPS position or anything. There was nothing on this one. But look, I am 23.6 miles away from Perdido Pass Bridge. I'm gonna work my way closer. But it is 66 degrees out here, 24 miles pretty much, out in the Gulf of Mexico, the surface temp. That is a good sign. We need this warm water to kickstart everything closer to shore. We're in 106 feet of water, got a 24 mile trip back to the pass. I'm gonna fish my way back in, so I'll see y'all at another spot. I just came in closer on my way back in, stopped at another reef. I'm gonna try to catch me a live bait that I can drop down on the bigger rod and see if there's any AJs hanging around this one. That'd be cool. All right, got a fish, ah, come on. I'm trying to get him up off the wreck and away from the dolphin. It's a little mangrove. Wow, check out the colors on that mangrove snapper. Look at the orange on it. This one's not a keeper. Well, and that's a big dolphin. But the colors on this mangrove snapper, beautiful. Look at that color. Uh, oh, there it goes. It's trying to eat the fish. And it did. Dang, hey, get away from where I'm fishing, dummy. Thing's like six feet long. We got the remaining 13 miles left, so 12 and a half right now, but we're headed back home. We're headed back to the boat ramp. It's a beautiful day out on the Gulf of Mexico. The scout boat handled it very nice. So let's go ahead and get back to dry land. All right, y'all, we are back home. That was 24 miles south of Orange Beach that I went out, 24, 25 miles. And then I did do a bunch of running around, but that was fun nevertheless. Didn't hook in anything giant. Well, actually I did and I lost it. So that is what it is. You can't do it every day, but I'm gonna get this boat loaded up. I got some fish to clean, and then we're probably gonna take these fillets to a restaurant and have them cook it up. I haven't done that in a while. They do pretty good. There's a lot of restaurants around here that do it. So stay tuned, stick with me. Don't forget to leave a like down below if you're enjoying this video so far, and I will see you back on land. I'm back home and I have the fish that I've caught over the past couple days. I'm gonna clean these up and take them to a restaurant tonight for dinner. There's plenty of around here in Orange Beach and Gulf Shores that can cook up your catch. Cause it's been a long day, I don't really feel like cooking or getting the kitchen dirty. So we're gonna take it to a restaurant and do that. And they'll serve it up with some sides and stuff too. You just gotta clean your fish first. But today's video is brought to you by Soar. They are a sponsor of the channel. They sent out some sweet filet knives. This is what I use on all my catch and cooks. I appreciate Sword for supporting the channel. If y'all wanna go pick you up some filet knives or clothes or hats or tools, I will include a link down in the description below. So without further ado, I'm gonna filet these up. Just go along that back there. Get along the bone. Now, I don't like cutting the skin all the way off. I like to flip it over so I have some weight to it. And then take the meat right off the skin just like that. Just slide right off. And there is a filleted up snapper. I will clean this up. You can take some of that red meat out and then these little pin bones that are here by the rib cage, I'll usually trim out as well. But that's a really cool little trick. Just leave a little tag in of skin by the tail and see there's no missed meat. You definitely wanna use a sharp knife to get the job done. And the seven inch works perfect for most species of fish. So I'm gonna finish cleaning these fish up, but let me show you a beeliner. Just same concept. I flip it around. Everybody has their own way of doing it, but this is just my way. Just like that, right along the back. And then fillet it right off the bones. 
same thing flip it around on the skin just like that and there is a filleted up bee liner very simple snapper very easy to clean they have thin skin they don't have very thick scales unlike a sheep's head or a big red fish or that porgy so we're going to finish cleaning these snapper up we'll put them in a bag in the fridge until we're ready for dinner i got this fish it's been sitting in ice the whole time we got cleaned up well i got cleaned up because i was nasty but mom and then my brother amrit are going to go to dock seafood take this fish and have them cook it up for us we are at my favorite restaurant here probably on the island is docks seafood that's my brother amrit what's up boy? he works over at hooked up bay and tackle if you see him if you ever go over there he'll help you out he knows he knows what he's talking about but we're at docks seafood shack it's right in the middle of orange beach so we're gonna take our fish over there and let him cook it up for us it's a cool little place they have like the best fried shrimp when you're on the beach and you see their little banner on the plane it is not lying when it says they have the best fried shrimp ever because they do but we're gonna go inside get seated for the cool little place all right we got an empty table so we ordered drinks our fish has gone back to the kitchen so i'll see y'all when it comes out we got a salad and a bud lot and then they're cooking our fish as we speak we just got our food here's the fish i'm just going to take a quick sampling and bite of it in here and then we're going to enjoy our dinner and then we'll close out this video but this is a snapper check that out their batter's so good let's try a bite that is amazing it had never been frozen it just came out of the gulf of mexico today that is awesome there you go oh man thank you mm -hmm. yeah it's still hot Good. that was just enough for all of us too that was perfect how is it it's good pretty good awesome man well we're gonna enjoy our dinner. I'm gonna put this camera away. Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna put this camera away and I'll see y'all in a little bit after dinner. Mm -hmm. Somebody's birthday today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't know, this place is cool if y'all haven't checked it out before. That was pretty good. What'd y'all think? That was delicious. Best. <laughs> so Doc Seafood actually did a really good job cooking that fresh fish. I'm glad that we were able to bring it by. So I appreciate y'all for watching. As always, don't forget to check out the sponsor of the channel, Sword Fishing, and subscribe if you have not already. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button and drop a comment down below if you want to see more like this. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.